Yes, we do have uh, Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani joining in with us right now on the phone. Uh, he's CMD Hiranandani Group and he's also president of Naretko West. Thank you so much, Mr. Hiranandani, for joining. Uh, first, you must have heard what Finance Minister has said. Uh, any first reactions? Uh, no, I think uh, my first reaction would be that it looks like uh, real estate is a uh, costly up. I think it will move up. Uh, I was expecting much lower indications in this sector. But uh, on a prima facie look at it, I think it's an upward revision. A large number of unregistered vendors do sell things with, at the local level when you are doing projects and things like that. And all that is really going to be added to the cost today because uh, there is a reverse charge as far as the developers are concerned. And barring certain uh, centralized areas where this will not happen to a great extent, a majority of developers will be affected negatively in terms of higher charge. So I think prima facie, first look cut, yes, it will become more expensive and it will become more costlier. We just hope that uh, something would have come on the affordable housing segment as uh, separate rules in terms of some kind of benefits to come, but they haven't, they are not seen anywhere. Yes, uh, that is one thing that we were also waiting for, anything on affordable housing and uh, nothing right now, uh, it, uh, the government is absolutely quiet on this. But uh, Mr. Hiranandani, what do you suppose uh, the government needs to do? Because we saw in various Kridai conferences and conclaves, uh, you were promised that it would be uh, revenue neutral. What is it that you are expecting from the government so that that actually happens? No, I think, uh, first of all, the, the, you know, we, the initial part of it was whether the other taxes at the local levels in terms of stamp duty and other things would be subsumed in terms of uh, GST. That has not happened. So a large number of taxes over and above this tax is going to take place. That's one. The reverse charge is, uh, I think, uh, wrong because uh, ultimately earlier it was supposed to be given credit to in terms of whatever is being paid at the earlier level. But looking at the way the industry is uh, geared at the countrywide level, I think uh, uh, by and large it looks like it's going to become more expensive for most of the people who are in the real estate industry in terms of construction and development. Time of AC, it looks uh, the industry is going to have uh, more difficult times in terms of costlier inputs. So we are challenged as far as that is concerned, along with VERA and uh, the other aspects of uh, demonetization, which of course is not there as much today. I must be honest that uh, that part we have been able to overcome. But uh, VERA regulations will bring a credit tightness and this will definitely cause uh, inflationary tendency in the real estate. Okay, so that is one thing that uh, almost all the developers are saying that the prices are going to increase. But I would say let's wait a little bit. Let's wait for the rollout and let's wait for RERA to really take effect and see exactly what happens to the prices. But you stay with us. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Shubranchu here. Uh, Shubranchu, you wanted to say something at that time when I cut you short. Uh, would you like to finish your train of thought? Yeah, so I agree with uh, all of them that uh, this reverse uh, GST is something uh, 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 which is going to apply in the short run. But I think that is the beauty of what, uh, you know, uh, the, the, it, it is going to get a fundamental change to the industry. So uh, the developer is going to work doubly hard to get all their vendors, uh, you know, get organized and uh, reduce the uh, reverse charge on themselves. And I think that will bring a lot of uh, credibility and uh, cost rationalization in the longer run. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how the impact will be in the short run though, because short run definitely the developer is going to be paying double. So, uh, they'll need to be more efficient is what you're saying now. They will have to get vendors who are GST compliant and you know are taking credit and passing on the input credit uh, to uh, the developer. So, Absolutely. I think their vendor base will have to start getting organized. Uh, um, Mr. Hiranandani, stamp duty is one pain point, I guess, because uh, uh, we all know that that is a big, uh, uh, sort of a big amount that a, a consumer pays. But that is one thing that states complete, completely refuse to let go. Now, uh, why is it so important for the states and why do you think it would have been 
better for the consumer if the states would have sort of set aside their own, uh, uh, you know, their own revenue uh, uh, sites? No, you see the point is that uh, uh, the real estate will now post uh, this GST coming into the factor will be probably the most highly taxed uh, sector in the country today. So if that happens, because there's not only stamp duty, there are local taxes by the local authorities, the municipal corporations, uh, the municipal councils, the revenue authorities, all of them have overtaxed uh, the real estate sector, believing that there is an unlimited uh, resource which is available for them to collect in terms of taxes. So if you look at it today, even today, about 33% of the cost of a house in the affordable segment, or maybe a little more, comes you know, is out of taxes. So if you are not going to be able to reduce these taxes, then it will go to, let's say, 40% uh, as a total amount if you are going to look at the reverse charge and other things. That means in an affordable housing sector, if you have 4,000 rupees as the uh, uh, cost of the house per square foot, uh, half of it will be tax taxes alone. So how, how are you really going to bring down a, uh, the cost of housing or bring about affordability if you are not segregating uh, affordable housing with the rest of the housing segment, one. And second, if you are not going to subdue the other taxes, then each of the levels at local authorities uh, like corporations and other uh, city uh, councils as well as the uh, state government in terms of uh, stamp duty and other charges in terms of additional FSI, they are charging additional amounts. All these are quite linked with the ready register rate or the circle rate as they call it in different places and those are going to be extremely inflationary. So cost, no, cost input for houses is 10% going to go up. But uh, the answer to whether prices overall will go up or not, that depends on supply and demand over a period of time. So I wouldn't be able to say, but the margins in terms of developers is definitely going to be squeezed. Okay. Uh, so, Vipin, um, uh, uh, for the sake of our viewers, I would really like to ask you, how does affordable housing right now work in terms of tax? Uh, what, what is it? Is it being taxed? Is it, has it got a tax holiday? What, what is it? What is the situation right now? So, uh, when it comes to taxing of uh, uh, houses, uh, it's it's generally the apartments and uh, uh, wherever there are more than 12 apartments in the place, uh, if somebody is building it and selling it, that's uh, what is uh, being taxed uh, under the, uh, uh, the GST net. But uh, uh, what needs to be uh, seen is that what is the incidence of uh, uh, tax on uh, these affordable housing. So uh, I agree with uh, what has been spoken here before on the affordable housing that if tax is going to be a major component whether it's uh, uh, GST, whether it's stamp duty and other a lot of other taxes uh, are going to get inbuilt into it and uh, whenever you build uh, affordable housing you are employing, uh, you are working on a, a much smaller scale and uh, uh, looking at uh, using uh, vendors uh, which are not registered and if you have to pay a tax on reverse charge and the credit of which is not available then you are looking at a lot of increase in cost uh, which is out there. Mm. So today at least that issues are not there, those issues are not there. There will be other compliance issues also which would come in depending on which state a particular builder is, where he is building, where the contractor is uh, providing the service from because the place of supply rules are uh, uh, very uh, uh, much related to the where the property is located. So a lot of other uh, compliance issues would uh, uh, crop in along with uh, the increase in rates, the lack of input tax credit and the reverse charge mechanism which is there. So this sector uh, uh, as Mr. Hiran Anani rightly said is going to be one of the, if you look at the total tax incidence, it may be one of the highest uh, tax in incidences out there. Okay, so it might be one of the highest, that's, that's quite scary in case, uh, because uh, uh, if you look at it, a house is probably the most expensive product that a consumer ever buys and that's probably the highest tax you ever pay in your life. So uh, uh, here uh, Mr. Pani, I would like to bring you here. Uh, 
why uh, why do you think that real estate though everybody thinks of it as an industry but you know me being a consumer and i uh, being a typical journalist i would like to know why is it not taken into consideration that a person who is buying is actually putting in his life savings and then the taxation is so high so what do you think that the finance minister would actually at least for the affordable housing and the lower cost houses would he be taking into into consideration because we still have to wait for a lot of things to come out right now see i think there are two factors uh, and like uh, Mr. Hiranandani clearly pointed out uh, there, there is uh, the reason why the stamp duty etc. has not come into the ambit of uh, uh, GST is that many of the municipalities consider the property tax and stamp duty as the primary source of earning. This is a major component of the earning of most of these municipalities and obviously uh, you know sharing that with the center was never uh, going to be easy. Uh, so, if you remove this major component of it uh, out of the purview of GST, uh, that means that the support has not completely uh, for this real estate industry as such, uh, you have not reduced the taxation when, it, when you add these two components. Now, how uh, will affordable work out is something which definitely they have to relook and they have to do something to reduce the input cost in affordable uh, housing. Well, if they expect that they will be able to uh, make affordable housing more affordable for the consumers for which they have started giving them a benefit of credit linked schemes etc. This is something which is in their hands. So if they think that in the affordable housing is not moving, they may come back and put something in, in the affordable housing basket to tell that okay, if it is affordable housing or if it is uh, you know, a 30 square meter or a 60 square meter uh, development, this is the type of credit which we will give or like uh, our panelist was saying that you know, uh, that definitely needs to be given, uh, this reverse uh, tax uh, has to be removed for at least affordable housing. So something has to be done if you want to keep the affordable housing industry going and uh, lucrative. Absolutely. So you, yes. I think affordable has to be relooked. Yes, affordable is definitely the key and I think uh, the government will have to uh, sort of put its micro microscope over there and really take a closer look at that because that is one thing and in fact if you look at the mission housing also the mission uh, 2022 housing for all then also it's it's beneficial for their scheme as well anyway thank you so much gentlemen for joining and uh, gst rollout is going to happen by uh, first of july there is not much time we will soon have the clarity and the speculation and uh, trying to understand what is going to happen is going to be clear soon so we hope that's going to happen pretty soon it's time for a short break now when we come back we find out what changes new up government has made to the draft rules of Rela. <laughs>